This here is my new Spider-Man 2 PlayStation 5 Slim. And in this video, I will be setting it up for the first time. Currently, I've got the PS5 with its horizontal feet, but for this video, I'll set it up like this temporarily, but you could see the feet over there. So that way it looks much nicer during my setup process. So you would need these feet to set the PS5 horizontally now. If you wanna use the PS5 vertically like this, you do have to buy a stand that is sold separately. Got the dual sense over here. And now let's turn this PS5 on for the first time. Once the PS5 is set up, all you have to do is push the controller PlayStation button and it will power it on, but this is gonna be the first time ever. So for that, all I have to do is actually push the power button, which is located right here. The eject button, however, has been moved to the right side there. So if I hit that, it beeps like that. But now what I'll do is hit the power button that is below the two USB-C ports. We've got the beautiful new lights that kind of extends all the way up there, which looks great. We're gonna wait for the monitor to show us what's going on. There we go, got the PlayStation symbol right there. It is all turning on for the first time. Looks beautiful, especially with this 4K Dell monitor that I recently picked up while it was on sale on Black Friday. It is looking sharp. So now what I'll do is, I'll push it just to make sure, but of course it's not gonna work. So we're gonna grab that new USB-C cable, plug it in here, and then we're gonna plug in the DualSense controller and push the PlayStation button on it, just like that. Now we can actually even unplug it because it is currently paired with the new PS5. All right, so select your language. We're gonna go with English. We're gonna connect to my Wi-Fi network, type in the password. After typing it in, we hit OK, and then it brought us to this adjust display area. So let's go ahead and do that. By using the up and down, we can set up our display area. I'm gonna leave it about right there. Let's hit okay. Power options for rest mode. Control the amount of power consumed and the future your PS5 can use while in rest mode. So we've got optimized experience, which is going to always apply the latest update. Be sure to save your game as it could close during an update. Turns on remotely when you connect your PlayStation app or remote play. Charges controlled after entering rest mode. Consumes more power. So I'm gonna go with low power use. Since I'm not gonna be really using this PlayStation 5 as much. Let's hit okay. And we've got the PlayStation system agreement. Let's hit that. And from here on, we've got a system update, which we can do right now, or we can do later. So I'm gonna do this later. So let's skip that step. And here we can also end up creating our user. But I feel like because I didn't do the update, it's telling me to create a user. Hit okay. Data collections, we're gonna go with limited data. And let's see what it does now. I think it's just gonna set up straight to the PlayStation 5. So this is like the quickest way you can set up your PlayStation 5. But if I went with the update, then it was gonna ask me to end up. Let me just lower this volume real quick. Go straight here to the settings real quick. Go to sound, audio output, and I'm going to turn off the home screen music since I prefer it being silent, just hearing the sound effects. But there we go. So what we'll do now is I do have to go with the update. I just wanted to see what happens if I don't do the update. And in this case, it's gonna go ahead and not even allow me to use the new disk drive because as you could see earlier, it said that I can't really use uh, the disk drive. It's showing us some tutorials on how the menu system works. But yeah, we had a notification that said, can't use this drive, we'll restart your PS5. And I believe if I hit restart now, it's gonna tell me I need to update it. And when I update it, I can also sign into PlayStation Network. Your disk drive is connected to your PS5. To use your disk drive, register it to your PS5. So let's hit okay. I have to turn it on and see, because we set it up already, it will just allow me to turn on the controller. It's also telling me to update now, so, I assume if we don't do this again, it's gonna tell me to restart. So let's hit update now. The PS5 system software will be updated. Let's hit update. Restarting your PS5.
All right, so we're gonna push the PlayStation button. Your disk drive is connected to your PS5. To use your disk drive, register it to your PS5. Let's hit OK. Now it's registering the disk drive to the PS5. You can now use your disk drive with your PS5. To safely remove your disk drive, make sure to first turn off your PS5 and unplug the AC power cord. Removing your disk drive while your PS5 is in rest mode might cause data loss, corruption, or damage. Let's hit OK. DualSense wireless controller device software. A new version of your DualSense wireless controller device software is available. This update will be quick and your console won't need to restart. Some features might not work properly if you don't update to the latest controller device software. To update later, go to settings, accessories, and things like that. So let's hit update now. You could also do that after 24 hours. And now we've got our DualSense controller updating nicely. So let's wait for this to complete. Now we've got the user, so let's go with this. There we go. We've got the Astros Playroom already installed, as you can see. But now what I have to do is go over to Users and Accounts, and then from here, sign into my PlayStation account. I'll go with signing manually, type in the email address as well as password, hit sign in, please wait, secure your account. You'll still sign into your PlayStation Network on this PS5 unless you sign out from settings. The following are recommended to make sure your account is more secure require a PS5 login password. I'm gonna skip this step, I don't need that. And then console sharing and offline play. I already have another PS5, so I'm gonna go with don't enable since I'm not gonna use this PS5 as often, I'll use the other one. That's it, don't enable. And from here on now, we've got my account all set up and let's go back out. Now we've got my PlayStation account. I can go over here to my game library. And from here on, let me see here, we can go to my collection and we can download any of the games that I wish right now from all my uh, library from here. We've got the PlayStation Plus. And from here, we also have the PlayStation Plus monthly games, which are these ones right here. And I haven't really uh, gotten them yet added to my library. So we'll go with that and add it to my library. We can also download it. I'll go ahead and put this into my library. And this is the benefits we get with the PlayStation Plus membership that all right so i'm not going to download any of this right now on this particular ps5 but now we've got all of these in my library so let's go over here into the uh, playstation store more option and then hit redeem code and now we can redeem that code when it comes to using my spider-man 2 voucher that this package bundle came with here i've got the code which is covered by this so we have to scratch here for the pin number so let's go ahead and do that real quick Now I'll type it in. Once I type it in, I'll hit done. And here below we can see Marvel Spider-Man 2, which is this one right here. So let's go with redeem. And now it's gonna put this game into my library. So it's 109.9 gigabyte. We can hit download. So let's do that. So now it's gonna start downloading that. Got the added to the downloads. And from here on, we can also go over to GTA 5, for example, and hit download on this as well. But yeah, this is pretty much the quick setup of my new PlayStation 5 Slim. If you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing and I will see you guys in the next one.